You are so not going to believe this. I met NAK, Ustad Numan Ali Khan. We spoke about marriage, family connections, communication or lack of between parents and youth and the common issues facing our youth. Please watch the whole video and share it with everyone you know. You're more inhibited Culture, about yeah. these topics. Like, it's very difficult for a son to talk to dad about getting married or frustration and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, what needs to happen here is basically a campaign, an entire campaign that's at the individual, family, collective, much to every level. And a big role in that has to be paid, played by our imams and our scholars. They actually have to give lectures not just to youth about guarding their chastity, but to parents about letting their kids get married. Mm -hmm and uh, you know halal alternatives and um, a lot of times we don't want to hear certain things that are happening in our community yes. like what you just said a lot of the elders that are sitting around us right know. now the moment even they heard it they were very disturbed yes. because it's not something they're used to hearing right um, what's happening with the vast majority of Muslims is very disturbing mm. and the solutions for that if they're not in the masjid they're nowhere this is supposed to be the solution center for Islam that's what it is so if people can't come here with, with parents themselves about these issues, because it's not a simplistic let, let young people get married issue. Mm. A lot of young people don't know what they're getting into when they get married. They don't know what responsibility is. They don't know what a job is. They don't know what it means to be a decent husband or raise kids. And you know, if a 19-year-old gets married and gets his mm. wife pregnant and she's having a, they're having a kid before they're 20, mm. right? Um, they don't, they're kids themselves, and mentally at least, right? Islamically, in the Shari'i yeah. sense, they're old enough to get married. But that doesn't mean they're socially mature, they're religiously mature, they're spiritually mature. All these maturities are missing, right? So it's a conversation where level heads from every side have to come together and have a chat. Uh, I, I personally believe this is a problem across the world for Muslims. You know, Desi Muslims are our sampling because that's, that's us. But it's across the world that, that this is an issue. You know, uh, illicit relationships are rampant in Egypt. They're rampant in Algeria. They're rampant in Pakistan. They're not just here. <coughs> Muslims are, you know, the young kids are doing whatever they're doing. Even in Muslim kids in India and Bangladesh, everywhere, right? It's it's one thing to just close your eyes and say, Those are the those are the modern people. They're not the masjid people. That's the majority of the ummah, man. 99.5% of the ummah is that. So if you just say, Now what's left? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And what's also happening at the same time, the 0.05% that's left, not even 0.5, that's too, too generous. 0.05% that's left mm -hmm. is too busy arguing about which scholar is yes. not on the path. Yes. And mm -hmm. which, which masjid you should not go to. And what, you know, how long your beard has to be and, you know. Mm -hmm. Dude, we can discuss that in good times. Mm -hmm. When we're in good times, we can discuss what mm -hmm. color clothes are closer to the sun. Mm -hmm. Right now we have people that are committing zina, mm -hmm. that are leaving Islam. That you, you go and tell them, you, you, get, you tell a young guy who comes in with their earring, right? That's haram. This guy's almost leaving Islam. The fact that he showed up to the masjid is a big deal. So in his mind, it's not just halal or haram, it's like earring or Islam, what should I pick? Well, I kind of like my earring. You know what I'm saying? Like we, there's, a, there's a missing sense of proportion in our religion of the, cat the catastrophe that's hitting the ummah. It's high time that all across, I don't care what uh, denomination, ideology, I don't care what people come from, religious leadership has to ring the bell and say, look guys, we need to sit down and sort some things out. The biggest crisis of the Ummah is not political, it's not economic, it's not sociological. The biggest problem of the Ummah is family. Biggest problem. Father can't talk to son. Mother can't talk to daughter. Husband can't talk to wife. Young man can't talk to his, you know, his dad and tell him, look, I need to get married. Or I'm in a relationship, how do I get out? How many of our boys have girlfriends and they don't, they can't, I can't, um, I, I love her, I can't help myself with all these feelings, etc, etc, and I can't talk to my parents because they, they say it's haram, and I, they'll say I can't get married, well, who am I supposed to talk to then? They're just going to go crazy. And eventually you have to give something up. <coughs> if you have these kinds of pulls, your parents are pulling at you, your religion's pulling at you, your hormones are pulling at you, the girl is pulling at you, you know, everything's pulling at you, right? Eventually you have to say enough. I'm going to have to let something go. So what do most kids let go? Parents, religion, mm -hmm. they hold on to the girl. Mm -hmm. And then, they, then when problems occur, then they let her go too. And then now they're by themselves and they're away from the masjid because they're depressed. And they're just, a lot of people are like that. 
you know? No, no, just to take that a stage further, because I'm just discussing this with him. I've got kids, we send them to the Magusta, they're like under 16, a little under control. But after 16... So you think? We, yeah. Well, it's still, they have to be, obviously, they're constant. Yeah, because 16, 12-year-old kids talk to each other, and what they talk about, we should know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed, yeah. You know? But the point is that in, in this country, especially after 16, they've got nowhere to go. Yeah. How do we attract them to the mosque? Well, you guys gotta have. You guys have to have the most, the most killer youth program. Mm -hmm. You should have the most amazing. Like teens should wanna be at the masjid because it's the most fun place to be. They should want mm -hmm. to be there. It's the most amazing. Place How to do be. we make it fun? Place? Well, I don't. I don't know the culture here, but like, yeah. here's what we did in our masjid. I used to be a youth director at the masjid. Mm -hmm. They put me in charge of a Sunday school. I told them it's a bad idea because I'm not gonna. Elders are gonna hate me. If you guys give me this job, they said we trust you. Whatever, go ahead. I eliminated all the textbooks from Sunday school. There was not a single lesson of Islamiyah taught in Sunday school to teenagers in my program. All we did it was in New York and in, in Long Island. All we did every week. Let's go to the beach. Fajr time. Let's pray Fajr and go to the beach. Then let's play some basketball. Then let's get some donuts. Let's hang out. Oh, let's play some video games after that and go home. Why? Because teens, all they need is a friend. Mm -hmm. They don't need advice because they don't listen to it. You have teenagers, you should, you should know that. There were teenagers sitting in this program, they didn't listen to a word I said. Not last night, not now. <laughs> and that's okay, because they're teenagers. Mm -hmm. It's alright, we have to know who they are. All they need is, and probably the only reason they came is a friend was coming. They just operate with friends, that's, that's their operating system. Okay, So, give them friends. Best thing you can do for a young Muslim is give him a good Muslim friend. Best thing you can do for him. Mm. They don't need advice, they don't need lectures, they don't need to memorize surahs, they don't need to learn fiqh because they won't practice any of it unless their friends practice it. Our entire project is give them a place to make friends. Give them a place where they're not judged, where they can hang out, where they can feel good about themselves. All teenagers want to do is hang out. That's all they want to do. All, te all girls want to do is talk. Give them a place to talk. You guys have Starbucks over here? Yeah. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. We're just. I mean, our, our our girls. They need a place to just sit and chat. Give them a place to chat in the masjid, or close to the masjid, a halal space where they feel comfortable, and they can just hang out. Because if we don't give them that, they'll find that online. They'll find that somewhere else. Mm. They'll, they'll just find it, right? So what we did in our masjid is, I, I I taught this huge Arabic class, and we raised tons and tons of money just from that class. And we our first investment, we put professional basketball hoops and night lights <laughs> at the masjid and every single every single night guys are getting together barbecuing playing ball coming to third fourth rakah in, in the jama'ah elders are yelling at hey salat started go inside these are the guys that were at the club last night mm -hmm. yeah. I don't mind if they join the fourth rakah I don't mind at least they're here even if he doesn't come in for salat Dude, he's within like a hundred feet of the masjid. That's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> this guy didn't even know that there is such a thing called masjid. He doesn't even, a Muslim kid doesn't even know that, right? We have to create, like, our part of our investment needs to be what are youth into? Yeah. When we become religious, we stay in our religious cocoon, we yeah. forget the rest of the ummah That's correct. and how they're suffering. And this is what we it, has to, it has to change. And plus, the other thing is, look at the prophets, right? Alayhi wa sallam. Salih is a good example. He would go to the business places of the people where the sinners are. He'd go to where the sinners are to go talk to them. Mm. Right? We, religious folks, will never be seen near city center, near the club scene, <laughs> near the party. Why? Because that's haram. Sakullah al right? Don't deal with those people. You have family members that are liberals. You don't even hang out with them. Don't even talk to them. Because they're too liberal. We have to hang out with our own kind. What's the whole point of that? <coughs> you go to people that are the farthest from you and you bring them into your fold, you invite them, right? Mm. It, it, and if you really want to see change, it won't happen at the large scale level. No. It'll happen with you becoming a mentor for a handful of people. Somebody else become a mentor for some other handful of people that are hanging out and getting together. It's a very human <coughs> interaction type thing, you know? So, and that's the same that goes for like ISAR. When we think super, we think and when we think incredible, we think, and when we think amazing, we think. But all these are just figures of our imagination. Now, fuel is low and the air comes in full blast, so I know we haven't got very long, and recovery was not going to come for hours. So I had to find a solution. 
So I kept walking and I found two planks of wood, an electrical wire and a pipe. 